Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Minute Steak and Egg with Red Hot Butter Sauce. That's right, there are more than one breakfast of champions. And unless you're training for a cereal eating contest, I would go with this one. And besides learning what might become your new favorite breakfast, if you pay attention, you're also going to pick up a couple bonus tips, like how to make cheap steak taste like expensive steak, and how to cook the perfect fried egg. So with that, let's go ahead and get started by prepping our top sirloin. And for one serving, I'm gonna suggest we use a six ounce piece of sirloin, which I'm gonna get by cutting this 12 ounce piece in half, which I could do across like this, but thicker pieces are harder to pound than thinner pieces. So I'm actually gonna turn it on its side and cut it in half like this. And by the way, this is not a game of speed, so take your time and slice that in two as evenly as you can. And of course, you can save this step and just have your butcher cut you six ounce pieces. So don't be afraid to ask them, they will do it. And then once we have what I think are the perfect size portions, we will go ahead and sandwich this piece between two pieces of plastic. And we will attempt to pound this out to about a quarter inch thick. And the good news about using top sirloin is that it's usually about half the price of the more expensive cuts like New York or ribeye or filet mignon. Right, it's probably a third of the price of filet mignon. But the bad news is it's very lean which means it's not as tender or flavorful, which is why we're gonna pound it nice and thin. Okay, so that takes care of the not being tender problem. And now that that's about a quarter inch thick, we can work on making it more flavorful, which we'll do by generously seasoning both sides with salt and freshly ground black pepper, plus a light, but very important sprinkling of breadcrumbs. All right, not a super thick coating, just a few teaspoons per side. And once those have been applied, to make sure they're attached to the meat, I think we should hit this with the meat pounder for a few seconds. And not only is that gonna give this a better texture once it's seared and bring a little bit of crustiness to the party, but somehow, some way, I also think it makes this taste better as well. Oh, and please note, I am using the fine breadcrumbs, not the panko style, which I think would work, but because of the short cooking time, I think the finer the crumb, the better. So we will season and crumb both sides, at which point our minute steak is ready to cook for about a minute per side. And we'll do that in a pan set over high heat, into which we're gonna spoon a couple tablespoons of clarified butter, which as you know is just melted butter with that white foamy stuff skimmed off. And one of the keys to a minute steak, besides pounding the meat nice and thin, is that we have to let this butter get smoking hot before we add the steak to the pan. So we will stand right there observing carefully. And as soon as that clarified butter just starts to smoke, we will quickly but very carefully lay our steak in the pan at which point we will cook it for about a minute per side. And of course, that depends on how thick you pounded your meat and also your desired doneness level. So I only went for about a minute, 15 seconds per side. And as soon as we flip that over, we can reduce our heat a little bit down to like medium high since that pan is super hot. But anyway, we'll give that second side about a minute or until we see a little bit of pink juice pool on the top. And that's it, I like to give it one last flip to sear that juice onto the pan at which point we'll turn off the heat and we'll transfer that to a warm plate and we'll reserve it while we cook our perfect fried egg. And what I like to do is let that pan cool for about 30 seconds or so, during which time we'll add another teaspoon of clarified butter and we'll turn our heat back on to medium and we will transfer one large egg into the pan, which I like to crack in a ramekin to make sure the yolk's not broken. Speaking of which, as soon as that's in the pan, I like to take the edge of a spoon or a spatula and break through that membrane that holds the white together, which has a name, which I don't know, so I just call it the membrane. And what's gonna happen is that egg white's gonna run to the other side, and it's not only gonna make our yolk centered, so it looks nice on the plate, but now all our egg white's the same thickness, which means it's gonna cook very uniformly. And it's that little simple move there that's the secret to a perfectly fried egg. Oh, and yes, we definitely wanna give this a pinch of salt. And that's it, we'll cook this on medium until the edges and bottom are nice and browned and crispy. And that white is cooked through, which it almost was at this point, but not quite. And then our yolk, of course, should be warm, but definitely not cooked through. Since if you're not gonna make this with a runny egg, what is the point? In fact, if you've never been able to do a runny egg, please, I beg you, make this the recipe where you try it. Trust me, you will never go back. And that's it, once the egg is cooked to our liking, We'll go ahead and turn off the heat and place that on our steak. And then we'll finish up by making one of the greatest two ingredient sauces of all time, which involves one chunk of butter, 
and a tablespoon or two of Louisiana hot sauce. And all we have to do is swirl those things together in the hot pan. And that butter will melt and emulsify into that acidic sauce. And that's it. We're ready to top our minute steak and egg. Oh, and in the spirit of full disclosure, on the way to the plate, I did stir in a couple teaspoons of water. Since by the time I moved the tripod and camera, the heat in the pan had sort of dried the sauce out. So what I'm trying to say is maybe stir a couple teaspoons of water into yours as well especially if it looks like it's too dry or separated. And then once we have that sauce, we can finish up with some chives or some green onions, or in my case, some really small green onions that look like chives. And those landed in the perfect spots, except for that one big piece. So I went ahead and did a little what I call fat finger food styling. And I got everything exactly where I wanted. And after taking a few contractually obligated pictures, I grabbed a fork and knife and dug in. And I started by busting that egg right in the yolk and spread over what is basically the second sauce. And that, my friends, was just simply incredible. Right, that meat was perfectly pink and nice and juicy. And as far as the texture goes, it was every bit as tender as a steak twice or three times the price. And while it doesn't have quite the same amount of breading as like a chicken fried steak would, that little bit of starch on the surface from the breadcrumb does wonderful things, both texturally and flavor-wise. And it's just a nicer experience than if we'd cooked the meat plain. And I do think a nice vinegary, Louisiana-style hot sauce works great here. But you could easily switch that out for your favorite Asian hot sauce. And I think it would be equally magnificent. But anyway, those type of tweaks are up to you. I mean, you guys are after all the Jane Campions of your breakfast of champions. And speaking of Westerns, I think this would be really nice with some fire-roasted chilies. Or if we go even further west to California, a few slices of avocado would be beautiful as well. So this is something you can definitely embellish if you want. But anyway, that's it. What I'm calling minute steak and egg. This thing was one piece of toast away from perfection. And yes, we're putting the minute in quotations, since it doesn't take literally a minute to cook. Okay, it's like when you tell someone to hang on for a second. It's kind of like that. But the point is it is super fast and very easy. Which is why I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts. A printable written recipe and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.